Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. And today, whoa, let's get this guy all the way on screen, shall we? We're taking a look at the Kubi Drake. Uh, this is a knife that I've always kind of had my eye on. I always thought it looked really, really good, um, but <laughs> didn't get around to getting it until now. Uh, and this is, as far as I can tell, the original Drake. It seems like there's some different versions that Kubi makes. As, as far as I can tell, this the, the larger version <clears throat> is the original. I remember seeing it years ago. Uh, this is the KB239. And then there's a KB... And then there's a KB310 and a KU310. The KB310 is the most expensive. It has an M390 blade. The KU has D2, and it's the most affordable version. And then you have the... Uh, you can also get a 310 in S30V. So, yeah, there's there's a ton of different versions of this knife. But, uh, yeah, well, we'll get into that later. Because, yeah, right, right now let's just do our size comparisons and stuff. Get that out of the way, and then we'll get into the, the weeds on different things and how knife companies name and label and sort their products and stuff like that. Okay, so let's start off with a blade length measurement. Uh, if I can find my ruler, it's been like a month since I filmed a review because I've been so busy. Um, where should I put my ruler at? Come on, Gideon. You know, you probably should have found that before you sat down to film, you dingus. Hmm. Let's find that. Ta-da, I found the ruler. You know what else I found? <laughs> you guys might get a kick out of this. This is a fossil I found uh, the other day. I was out doing some fossil hunting. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about that? That's um, that's interesting looking, isn't it? And it was already broke when I found it, which is kind of a shame. Um. <laughs> looks kind of goofy. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you guys decide what that looks like. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Some type of large bivalve of some kind, I believe. I've I had a couple of I talked to a couple of people that offered a couple of uh, suggestions, but it's just yeah, it's pretty cool. The rock itself that it's on has all types of tiny little fossils. There's an echinoderm spine uh, right there, but yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> thought I'd share that with you guys because uh, it makes me laugh every time I look at it. Get the dust off of here. Okay, so Kubi Drake, blade length. Let's go ahead and finally do this. We're coming in just a hair under four inches. This is a, this is a pretty sizable knife um, for sure. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do our size comparisons. As always, we're bringing out the rats. There's the one, and the dos. So yeah, about the, in the same ballpark as the Rat 1. Um, definitely a full size to large knife. Let's go ahead and bring out our Civivis. There's the Praxis, the Elementum. Big and blue, that's how I like my knives. Uh, and let's bring out our flagship comparisons. There's the Benchmade Bug Out. And there's the Spyderco PM2. Ta-da! And to close out size comparisons today, let's go ahead and compare against another Kubi. This is the Tidious. <laughs> and, uh, Here's the, artist, uh, here's the CGRB Caldera. I unboxed these in the same video, and, you know, they're both big knives, so there we go. All right, what are we looking at uh, in terms of materials here? Uh, on this version, we've got G10 scales, titanium clip, steel liner lock, and Austin steel. Now, it seems like this version of the knife that's being made now um, whoa, focus up, camera. What happened there? Ta-da! Uh, you can get this in 14C28N now, 
which is awesome. I think that's good. In fact, I would probably prefer prefer 14C over OS 10, uh, if I'm being honest. But uh, the OS 10, I don't really mind. Of course, you mentioned the smaller versions that you can get with different, like D2, S3V, M390. Um, I, th th those models have different model numbers. I don't know why they're not called the Mini Drake or what something. They're just called the Drake. A uh, little bit confusing there, but we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that a whole lot. So let's go and do some cutting, shall we? Hey guys, who's ready to talk about the Kubi Drake? I am. It is so nice right now. Here, let, 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 let's share some views first. Ain't that pretty. Especially with the dark clouds coming in. Adjusted right. I don't know. I love, I love storm clouds. There's a little bit of a breeze blowing. It's cool. You can taste that wind coming in. The moisture. The desert also just smells so much better right before rain. It smells really good after rain too. But there's just something about the, the right before. It's really really nice. Alrighty. This is not a nature documentary. This is a knife review. So let's review a damn knife, huh? So this is the Kubi Drake, designed by Max to Chuck, I believe. Yeah, I hope I'm saying that right. I hope so. That's how I've heard other reviewers say it. Um, this is a really cool knife. And, well, we'll talk about other stuff at the table. Like, you know, there's a couple of other models that are called the Drake that are like this, but smaller. And whatever. So, materials. Austin blade. G10, titanium clip. We also went over materials at the table already. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's talk about the action. It's a very interesting action. It's, I, I really like it. Very strong on the flip. And then it like, it, I don't know, it like glides closed. If you're all about like drop shutty action, I mean, I'm sure you could adjust this to be that way, but I don't know. I like the way it's just kind of I don't know, that's really sexy to me. And it feels amazing. Like, I cannot describe how it feels, but it's like tight but smooth. It's like a constant, just very, very gradual, just, I don't know. It's, a, it's an action that I can feel in my hand as I'm closing the knife. Really, really weird thing to say, I know, but it's, trust me, that's, that's exactly what it feels like. But yeah, that's just me saying the action is great. You have this thumb hole, which the thumb flick on this is amazing. Do you hear that sound? Let's do that again. Whack! It almost sounds like a like a, a hollow wooden tubing. Whack! On something. You got a reverse flick, of course. But I don't know, that thumb flick is amazing. Uh, the flipper tab works great despite being so small. It's got fantastic jimping and get a good now leverage. The detent is perfect. Okay, so, ergonomics. Ooh, I felt a raindrop. Ergonomics, you've got plenty of handle, and it's comfortable. The scales are contoured. It's nice and fat. Some people don't like their folders to be fat. I don't mind it. Gives you something to hold on to. you got good jimping up here. Got a choil that you can get into, and it just, it works like that. Um, personally, I didn't use a choil that much with this blade, but you could if you wanted to. The pocket clip is mill titanium. Don't hardly feel it at all. I mean, I know it's there, but it's not painful and that's good. The scallop right here is excellent for your finger. It just the ergonomics of this knife work really, really well. Max to Chuck did a fantastic job designing this. Okay, let's talk about the carry. So, titanium clip and let's go ahead and tilt down. Oh, we're like all skewered. Yeah, whatever, it'll be fine. Goes in, comes out. It's a pretty good titanium milled clip, honestly. I don't really have a whole lot of complaints. Um, I think as far as titanium pot clips go, it's pretty good. It's not deep carry, but I think that's okay. You know, give you something to grab onto to pull the knife out of your pocket. All right, 
let's go ahead and get some cutting done. So, this blade, um, this is a really interesting blade shape. It's like a clip point. I, I'm gonna call it like a pirate, like a cutlass blade. Although it's not really a cutlass blade. I don't know. It's just really, really cool. Clip point is probably the best. You know, it's a straight clip point, not reverse tonto. No one say that in my comments. But you know, straight clip point is probably the best descriptor. Austin steel, which I don't mind uh, from Kubi at this price point. I think that's okay. The blade has a bead blast, which I hate, but let's go ahead and do some cutting. Oh, if our cardboard doesn't just fold on us. It's got very good cutting. Yeah. <laughs> it's got very good slicing geometry. No complaints there. Let's go ahead and grab our rope. Ooh. Nice, powerful cut. I like to see that. Let's do our push cuts. One, oh, two, ooh, three. Hoo, 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 hoo. It did that test very well as well. That is really good. Excellent. I felt like I could get a lot of leverage down there towards the, uh, the belly here. So, really cool. Good, good. And then, pool noodle time. <clears throat> and yep. We got Mr. Blue. I know. I know. We were supposed to have used him up a long time ago. But the little bastard just keeps escaping justice. So, we're going to fix that today. Blue knife. Blue pool noodle. I think it works. Okay, that one's gone. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, dang, pretty dang consistent. It's a little bit of an oopsie right there, so that's probably a little bit of an inconsistency in the grind at some point. It looks pretty even, except there is, it looks pretty even all the way around, except out towards the tip. Let's see if we can, <laughs> get in my pocket, let's see if we can demonstrate that. Uh, maybe we'll show it at the table if I haven't sharpened the knife already, but I can tell that the grind is a little, little steeper towards the tip. So, you know, there's that. Alrighty, let's get out of here. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and talk about what I'm liking and not liking about the Kubi Drake. First of all, I think this knife just looks fantastic. All the lines flow into each other really, really nicely. It's very distinct looking like, you know, in a world where so many knives are starting to look the same, this this looks very unique. Even though when I unboxed it, I directly compare it to a Ferrum Forge design. We're gonna forget that for a second. It's a good looking knife. This blade, it's like a clip, a straight clip point. No, we're not calling this a reverse tanto. I, I'm sorry, I know a lot of you guys like reverse tantos. I, I, I don't like that terminology. Um, very interesting blade shape, very useful blade shape, uh, honestly. Uh, this knife probably needs a sharpening. Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, we're a little bit rough there. Not bad. Aus 10 uh, holds up really, really well. This blade's held up fantastically. I guess that's what we're talking about next is this blade. Um, I've got one huge complaint with it that we'll get into later, but overall the blade is... Focus up here, camera. It's the downfall of having cool stuff in the background of the videos. Sometimes I don't want to focus on the blade. Uh, but yeah, good blade. I like it a lot. You got plenty profile for slicing. It's a flat grind. It comes down to a reasonably thin edge. Look at that. I mean, it's kind of hard to focus on here. Man, this is a big knife. It's hard to move around. But yeah. Nice thin edge. Um... Cuts good, slices well. You can get to your utility cuts pretty good. Um, yeah, it just it works well. It's a pretty good all around knife. I've been knife blade. I've been liking the steel. Not bad. Good, good, good. Uh, let's talk about the ergonomics because they are fantastic. You see, we've got like these little chamfers in the handle scales here. Um, 
Really, really cool. Good idea. I like that. By the way, going with the looks, this blue color is awesome. Um, but yeah, the very, very nice texturing there. The G10 feels really good. Like it feels different from most other G10s I've ever felt. You see here the knife is pretty thick. Let's bring out another that other Kubi. It's a pretty thick knife. Um, but to me, I don't mind because, yeah, in the hand, this is just excellent. This chamfer here, my finger just sits in there so nicely. You can choke up to this choil. Really, really nice uh, grip there. You'd be back here. If you've got huge hands, you know, maybe this little thing right there will be good for you. The jimping here is very nice. It's placed well. It's got good traction. I like that. I complain about jimping a lot. And you know what? This knife here. Not a whole lot to complain about. Good jimping. I like that. Um, the pocket clip does not bother me in the hand at all. That's one of the benefits of a mill titanium clip is usually they're pretty good in the hand. I mean, I guess I know it's there, but it doesn't like poke into my hand. And even during use, even when I was cutting, uh, no hot spots off the clip. So I really, really like that. But yeah, just fantastic ergonomics. Uh, access to the lock bar. Very good. Let's talk about that action because this action is unlike any action I've ever felt. Um, I mean, you can see that detent is dialed. It smacks out of there. And on the close, it's like so buttery, smooth, and controlled. I don't know. It just feels amazing. It feels high-end and quality. And this is exactly how I like my knives to be. I'm not all about the guillotine. Oh, that thumb flick is fantastic. Let's listen to that. Oh, uh, I'm not all about guillotine action. I like kind of a controlled glide. And yeah, this gives me that controlled glide all day long. Love that. It's, oh, so good. So, so good. Um, the fit and finish on this knife is really, really nice. We have T8 hardware all the way around, which is awesome. Got a nice back spacer. Love to see that. Um, we've got nice rounding everywhere. We kind of talked about that already, but perfectly centered. Just, yeah, really, really good. Really, really good. Um, yeah, there, that's about what I want to say for the positives. Overall, just... A heck of a user, looks great, feels great, and uh, yeah, I like it a lot. All right, moving on to what I don't like. <sighs> the blade is bead blasted. I, till the day I die, I will not stop harping about bead blasts. They suck. I hate bead blasts. This knife did rust on me a little bit. I think I made a short about that. Um... I fixed it up. It was just surface rust. I was able to take it off pretty easily. <sighs> Come on. Kubi is one of the... They, they make some of the best budget knives, but they are also one of the companies that is the worst about their bead blast. Like, they bead blast everything, and they need to stop. It is not okay. I hate bead blasts. Just give me a satin or a stone wash or a coated blade or spit on it or acid wash it rub feces all over. I would I would prefer anything over a bead blast. Literally anything. But yeah. Anyways, moving on. Uh next thing, I'm not a big fan of this lanyard hole. Like it, it, it's weird that they have this pill-shaped lanyard hole back here. It kind of takes away from the flow of the knife. They could have put a pin in the backspacer. And I think this this is just a weird place to have a lanyard hole. Uh, if I was going to put a lanyard on this knife, I mean, for one, that's a lot of knife to go through, but it's also up here. I don't know. It's just I'm not a big fan of that lanyard hole at all. Not, not my favorite thing that they've ever done. Uh, and next thing, out of the box, this knife, when I would disengage the lock bar, it wouldn't move. I'd have to shake it down and it like a day later, it broke in, but, uh, yeah, a little bit of a weird thing, but yeah, it, it broke in, so I guess it's not really worth complaining about. 
So, price. I bought this knife for about 70 bucks, and I'm seeing that the 14C28N versions are going for about 67 on Amazon. I've got it pulled up right here. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, you got the black one with 14C28N, bead blasted $67. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's a great, that, that, that's a really good price. For the OS 10, again, I would prefer 14C, but I don't really mind the OS 10 either. I think it's a really good steal. Pretty comparable. Um, I also see that uh, Blade HQ has the black blade with the green uh, scales on it with the black clip. And uh, I gotta say, it's really cool that Kubi is now on Blade HQ. I saw that the other day that there was a bunch of Kubi models popping up on Blade HQ, and I was like, hey, that's neat. Um, As Sin Cuts on Blade HQ too now, Petrified Fish. Blade HQ, I, I guess they're kind of, or maybe it's not Blade HQ that's starting to expand out. I, maybe it's that the companies are starting to, you know, find more retailers to sell them. But uh, yeah, I think that's an absolutely fine price for this knife. Overall thoughts and opinions on this knife. I love this knife. I love this knife. Um, one thing that I probably should mention is it's a big knife, but it's not super heavy. Like it doesn't feel like a big knife, really. It feels very nimble, very wieldy. I enjoy carrying it a lot for a four inch blade. It doesn't really feel like I've got four inches of knife in my pocket. Super comfortable. I love this action. This is one of the best budget knife actions I have ever felt. It's just ridiculously good. Even with such a small flipper tab, like they did this flipper tab right. It's got perfect jimping on it. The hole is shaped really well. I, I just, I love carrying this knife. I love using this knife. My biggest complaint is the bead blast. Please, Kubi, no more bead blasts. Um, but other than that, can I recommend this knife? 100%. Kubi, Kubi's killing it. They are knocking it out of the park. And this knife, this is, I, I, I can't believe I waited this long to get one because this knife has always been attractive to me and I just never picked one up, never picked one up. Finally picked one up. And I'm glad I did, and I'm gonna keep it. Um, I really do enjoy it a whole lot. So, definitely goes into Gideon's recommended knives category. Also, let, let's let's zoom in on this G10. Can you guys see that texture there? I said in the unboxing, this reminds me of like painted wood rather than like typical G10. And I stand by that. It's got such a unique feeling compared to other knives in g10 i don't know what it is but it's just it's really nice it's really really nice unlike my hands i mean my nails are all cut up and <laughs> ragged but yeah like this knife t8 hardware all the way around build quality is solid it feels like a high-end budget knife and at the price 70 bucks i would consider it to be one and it totally lives up to the expectations it's just it's a great knife so, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you get on with your day. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.